Um, good morning. I'm Paul Cunningham. I was hired yesterday by... That's funny, I forgot his name. You'll have to excuse me. It's my first day on the job. I'm a little nervous. It, it was the boss who hired me, though. At least, that's what he said. I know. He told me. Sylvia. Miss Sylvia Payton. <laughs> I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Cunningham. If you'll uh, hang up your coat, I'll show you what you have to do. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I'm late, Miss Payton. I took the wrong train by mistake. Generally, you'll find that I'm a pretty prompt person. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Just make sure that it doesn't happen too often. He's very strict when it comes to our being here on time. And now that he's made me responsible for this whole department, of course, I won't say anything to him about it this morning. Well, I, I sure would appreciate that a lot. Oh, don't even mention it. Believe me, I didn't ask him to be made a supervisor. I hate telling anyone what to do. That's part of my nature, I guess. Is, is that your lunch? Yes, yes. Yeah? Oh, well, I'll put it in the file cabinet. That's where I keep mine. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pretty lucky to get this job. I go to school at night. A, a lot of firms won't hire you if they know that. Well, you must be a very ambitious person. What are you studying? Law. Another three years, I'll have my degree. Boy, that's one day I'm looking forward to. Gee, that must be extremely difficult. I mean, going to school and having a job at the same time? Well, it's been real rough so far, but it has its advantages. At least when I get out, I'll have the satisfaction of knowing I, I did it all by myself. My own sweat, my own money. Well, that's more than most fellas my age can say. Oh, how true that is. <laughs> I, I have an uncle who's a lawyer. He's a pretty darn famous lawyer, too. Francis T. Cunningham. Would you ask anybody in the legal field about Francis T. Cunningham, they'll tell you what he's worth. Well, all I have to do is get on the phone, give him a ring, my worrying days will be over. Not for me, no, sir. I'm gonna do it on my own, or I'm not gonna do it at all. And I think you're 100% right. You know, uh, I was going with a boy. It wasn't anything serious. It uh, could have been, but... Uh, who? I don't want to go into that now. <laughs> anyway... His father was paying to put him through medical school. He didn't have to earn a penny on his own. You think he finished? What happened was his father remarried and stopped giving him money. He fell completely apart. You never saw anything like it. There's no substitute for character. Well, that's exactly the point. Well, listen, <laughs> we better get started before he starts screaming. We're on a promotion campaign now, and it's a very important job. I suppose that's why you were hired. Now. What we do is, we type out the names and addresses of prospective customers on these postcards. The advertisement is printed on the back. We get our information straight from the telephone book. Now, go right down the line. Don't leave out any names, because he checks everything. And he can be very mean if he wants to, OK? Now, I have started with the A's. So you will start with the? B's. Right. And that way, we'll be sure to get in everyone. Well, it, it sounds easy enough. Oh, it is. It is. Listen, after a while, you'll do it without even thinking. Whoops. <laughs> That's my first mistake. <laughs> my first card. I'm a little rusty. You'll have to excuse me. I haven't been doing much typing lately. Oh, no, don't. Throw it away. He'd raise the roof if he saw this. No, no. At the beginning, try typing a little more slowly. Lean back in your chair. Now, posture is very important. Just try striking each key with the same steady rhythm, like this. Like this? Yeah, that's better. That's better. Don't move your head. Oh, boop. Don't move your head. Try keeping your eyes on the material that you are typing. No. Well, it's very nice of you to help me like this. Oh, I, I, I'm only too glad to, Mr. Cunningham. Paul? 
pool. That's for me. That's for me. He doesn't usually call this early. Go on, go on with your typing, Paul. You know, he gets furious if he doesn't hear these machines going. He probably wants to know what took us so long getting started this morning. Oh, well, I... Oh, don't worry. Don't worry, because I'm going to cover up for you. Gee, thanks. Thanks for everything, Sylvia. You're welcome. Paul? <laughs> Nerd. Who does he think I am? A child? Well, he can just get someone else to do his dirty work because I'm leaving. What, what happened? Balling me out for being five minutes late. That's a nerve, let me tell you. Oh, so you were late this morning, too. Huh? No, well, there's nothing funny about that, Paul. When you've given as much time and energy as I have to this firm, giving them the best that you're capable of, maybe you'll see things a little differently. Where are my gloves? Right here. Oh, gee, you're a little upset, Sylvia. Why don't you think about it? No, 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 there's nothing to think about. When he asks you where I went, you tell him for me that I do not care to associate with a firm that has no feelings for its employees. Yeah, but it's not easy finding a job nowadays. I can tell you that. Oh, with my experience, you must be joking. I've, I, I've turned down many jobs in the past out of a sense of loyalty to that. That sex maniac in there. This is my reward. I wouldn't give him the satisfaction, no, sir. What satisfaction? Well, it, it stands to reason he wanted you to quit. He knows you're a sensitive girl. By leaving now, you're doing exactly what he wants. Oh, you mean he deliberately... Why else would he have bawled you out? Die before I gave him the satisfaction. That's what he has in mind. He's got another thought coming. I'm leaving at my convenience, not his. Oh, boy, now you're talking, Sylvia. Boy, boy, the day will come when he'll really need me. Miss Peyton, won't you please help me get through this job in time? Then it's going to be my turn. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to laugh in his stupid face and walk out. Boy, I sure would like to be here to see that when it happens. <laughs> is he married? No, who would marry him? He's as ugly as sin. That's what he is. <laughs> what? What? <Listen. laughs> we had a girl working here, and she was a riot. She used to draw caricatures of him, and she would mail them to him. Oh, anonymously, of course. <laughs> you, you should have seen them. They were the funniest things. <laughs> Listen, the last place I worked was for this woman, this Mrs. Jameson. She was as blind as a bat without her glasses. You know what we used to do? We used to hide her glasses somewhere in the office for two or three days until she found them. We didn't have to do any work. Not a single stroke of work. We just sit around all day and talk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, when I uh, graduated from high school, I worked for this insurance company, and there was a man in charge there. Mr. Williams, his name was, and uh, he used to have loose hands. Do you, do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, one day he was showing me how to type an insurance policy, and he came up behind me, and he let his hands fall very, very casually on my shoulder. So I turned around, I looked right up at him, I spit right in his face. You were fired, I'll bet. No, as a matter of fact, we got along very well after that. Have you read any good books lately? Oh, yeah. I read a very good detective novel last week. It was called Murder in Bombay. I'm a science fiction man myself. Can I ask you something? Sure, sure. What is it? If you had to choose between a million dollars and losing your leg, 
Which would you pick? Right leg or left leg? Any leg. I'd pick the million dollars. Oh, I wouldn't. I'd keep my legs. I was born in a poor section of Brooklyn. My parents were at each other's throat most of the time. I didn't have any brothers or sisters, just the three of us living alone in this rundown old house with cats screaming and crying all night in the alley. Why my parents ever got married, I'll never know. And why they stayed together as long as they did, I'll never know that either. They're separated now, but that doesn't matter anymore. They were as unlike as any two people could be. All my father wanted was to be left alone to smoke his pipe and listen to the radio. My mother, she was a pretty woman, all right. She, she liked to go out and enjoy herself. I was stuck between them, and they pulled on both sides. I, I couldn't talk to one without the other accusing me of being ungrateful. I, I couldn't touch or kiss one without being afraid the other would see it, and there'd be a fight. I had to keep my thoughts to myself. I grew up wishing for some sort of miracle. I, I remember coming home from school. I must have been eight or nine. There was this man in the living room with my mother. They weren't doing anything. They were just sitting there and talking. But I had a feeling something was going on. I seemed to stop breathing. I ran out of the house and I threw up on the curbstone. After that, I swore I'd make a miracle happen. I'd never have to be what I didn't want to be. I'd never have to do what I didn't want to do. I'd always be myself without being afraid. But it's rough. See, with a background like mine, you're always trying to catch up. It's as if you were born two steps behind the next fella. never had money problems. In that respect, we were very fortunate. My, my father made a good living while he was alive, that is. He uh, passed away when I was 17. Now, you could say that my parents had a fairly happy marriage. At least, we never knew when they were angry with each other, and that's a good thing for children. I, um, I have a sister, Charlotte. She's married now, and we don't bother much with each other, but when we were younger, you wouldn't believe what went on. Every time we quarreled, according to my parents, she was right. I was always wrong. She got everything she wanted, no matter what. And I had to be content with the leftovers. Oh, it was just unbearable. Anyway, my father was sick for a long time before he passed away. And uh, I remember he had this ring. It was a beautiful ring with a large onyx stone in it. And when I was a girl, I used to love to play with it. I'd hold it up to the light and I'd look through and I'd see hundreds and hundreds of beautiful red and blue stars. Well, he had always promised me that ring. He always said it belonged to me. And I was certain that before he passed away, he'd give it to me. But uh, he didn't say anything about it, not a word. Well, afterwards, I saw it. You know where I saw it? on my sister's finger. He had given it to her. Now, I don't think that's a background that leaves many possibilities for development. I don't forgive my father. Definitely not. And I don't forgive my sister. My mother, who I now support with my hard work, still says I'm wrong. Go to the movies. Oh, not too often. Me neither. Well, do you like to watch television? I don't get the chance. Don't forget, I go to school five nights a week. My wife watches it a lot, though. That's all she does. I didn't know you were married. 
Listen, this, this machine is full of errors. I'm, I'm getting nowhere fast. Let me see. Now, let me see that, please. All right. All right, you see, this could be erased. We do not approve of wasting material when it could be saved. That is not the policy of this office. All right, you don't have to get mad. Give it to I me. I am not mad. Now, I am responsible for what goes on here. Listen, I am getting sick and tired of covering up for your mistakes. What am I, a rare to be stepped on? First him and now you. Will you please tell me what you're talking about? Oh, you know very well what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, this, I mean this. This is my thanks. This is what I get for being nice and trying to be helpful to people. Oh, I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. Everything I do is wrong. Well, I've had it, and I'm not going to take any more. Not from you or anyone else. I won't. Oh, I won't. Let me speak to Francis T. Cunningham, please. Who's calling Paul Cunningham? Hello, Un Uncle Frank? It's me again, Paul. How, how are you? Is everything all right? That's good. Now everything's pretty much the same with me. I'm still plugging away. I've, I've got a new job now, office work, typing. Well, it, it's just enough for bread. Uncle Frank. Could you give me a hand? It's, you know, it's, it's nearly killing me going to school every night and, and working all day in an office. It's been real rough. I know, but I thought if you could give me a job in your office, a part-time job, well, well, one of your friends, if you could talk to him. Yes, I understand. No, I, I understand. Yes, sir, I will. I will. Will you send my regards? I'm, uh, I'm sorry for losing my temper, Paul. It won't happen again. Oh, that's all right. Boy, you've become an expert on that typewriter. Well, at least I'm an expert at something. What, is something the matter? No. I was just thinking, what am I knocking myself out for? School nearly every night, weekends, I'm home studying. I can't remember the last time I had a decent vacation. And what for? You're only young once. Now's the time to enjoy yourself. Well, I don't know how true that is. I think you would enjoy yourself a great deal more if you were a lawyer. Oh, yes, that's why certain sacrifices have to be made now. Now, you see, that's the kind of logic that leads nowhere. By your reasoning, all lawyers should be happy men. No, sir, that is not the way life is. You, you could be a ditch digger and still be happy if you knew how to live. No, I tell you, I've had it. I've had it. A fellow in my position has to accept what's offered. He's got to be practical. He's got to look the facts right in the eye. Look, this here is what is offered. This is my chance. I'm going to start concentrating on this job. I'll show him I'm on the ball, and, and maybe he'll give me a better position. A higher salary, a promotion. Well, why not? An outfit this big are always looking for men who are not afraid to work. Listen, I've got two kids of my own. I've got to start thinking about them, too. Oh, you've got two children. Sure, listen, I, I don't waste any time. Look, these pictures were taken last summer. Well, what do you think? Yeah, they're beautiful, Paul. What's their names? Uh, Frank and Sally. We call the boy Buddy, though. He hates it when we call him Frank. He's a funny little rascal. Not bad for a character like me, huh? Listen, Sylvia, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna march right into that office and ask him what my chances for advancement are. Frankly, I could use the money. Boy, the expenses are killing me. Boy, if we, if we only had a union here, we might get some action. Well, I might do something about that, too. Listen, uh, what's the best way of approaching him? I, I honestly don't know, Paul. He changes from one minute to the next, but, uh, if he's not wearing his glasses, that's a bad sign. I know that much. Glasses? All right, I've got that. Well, wish me luck. Yeah, well, 
I hope that uh, you get something good. Ma, Sylvia. Now I'm fine. Did the lamp come? Oh, well, just make sure that when it comes, it isn't damaged. You'll have to sign for it, and that means that you inspected it. Look at it carefully. If there isn't any damage, you can sign. But if there is anything the matter, the smallest thing, refuse to sign and tell the man to take it back. Do you understand? Well, I hope so. <laughs> did, um, did I get uh, any calls? No, I wasn't expecting any. Oh, don't put words in my mouth. I merely asked you if I got any. Well, never mind, it's not important. Did Charlotte call? How is she? Huh? Oh, <laughs> oh Arthur, now. Arthur, don't you be silly. <laughs> I, ha I, I can't. I have something this Saturday. Uh, no, I mean it, but maybe Sunday. But listen, Arthur, don't call me at the office. Call me at home. Right. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> It looks good. It looks very, very good. He's, he's considering it. He says uh, they, they may need somebody new on the sales staff. Well, I, I'm first on the list. Oh, well, that's wonderful, Paul. <laughs> I mean, uh, how about your raise? I'll have to wait for that for a while, he said, but, but I'll get it. Listen, he was tremendously impressed, especially when I told him I had some legal experience. Should have seen his eyes open up. It's only a question of time, Sylvia. Once I get started, it's going to take a pretty fast man to catch up with me. Well, you certainly have ambition, Paul. Yeah, well, well, why not? Listen, I don't intend to spend the rest of my life working here or anywhere else, for that matter. There's a world outside that window, a world with a thousand things to see and do, and I'm going to see and do every last one of them. You watch. Oh, there's a million different things to do yeah. in the world. Lie in the sun. Dance. Travel. Wear pretty clothes. Visit places. Meet interesting people. Yeah, places with mountains. Lots of mountains. Yeah, you know, I'm so filled with the desire to, to live, to experience things. Listen, I want to laugh. Oh, I do. <laughs> I want to laugh. Yeah. Oh. What time do we have lunch? We ain't having any time we like, but I usually wait until one. The longer you wait, the shorter the afternoon is. How about waiting till 1.30, then? Oh, well, that isn't easy. I know, but then there'd be fewer hours to wait. The afternoon would fly. What do you say? I'm willing, if you are. OK. It's a deal, then? 1.30 lunch. 1.30. <laughs> right. I'm getting hungry already. <clears throat> Me too. Listen, I didn't have any breakfast. I had a cup of coffee, that's all. What did, what did you bring for lunch? Oh, I brought a tuna fish salad with tomatoes and mayonnaise, an orange and a piece of layer cake. What did you bring? Um, two turkey sandwiches on whole wheat and an apple, I think. 1.30. That's the deal. Boy, we went to Chinatown last weekend. What a meal we had. Oh, I'm crazy about Chinese food. I used to go with a fellow who could speak Chinese, and, uh, well, oh, he ordered the most fantastic dishes. Chicken livers with mushrooms and almonds. Yes, well, well, the, the Chinese know how to cook all right, but when it comes to real cooking, you can't beat the Italians. We go to an Italian restaurant over on the west side. You should taste them. Veal parmesan, the chicken cacciatore. They make a spaghetti sauce. I think I'll eat now. We made a deal, didn't we? Now listen, don't be childish. If I want to eat now, I'll eat now, and that's all there is to it. You women are all alike. No backbone, no self-discipline. Go ahead, go ahead, eat, eat, eat if you want to. See if I can. I'm sticking to my word. 
I said I was thinking about eating. I didn't say I was going to eat. Why don't you listen before you speak? I'll tell you something else. I could probably wait longer than you. I could probably go without lunch, which is more than most people can say. Is that so? Oh, yeah, that is so, exactly. Well, we'll see, we'll see, Miss Supervisor. You're jealous. It's coming out all over you. Yes, I am, Supervisor. Yeah, of this whole department. Well, I'll never forget that as long as I live. Believe me, Mr. Cunningham, I didn't ask to be made supervisor. I don't like telling people oh, what to do. Oh, you keep it up. I've... You just keep that up. You won't be working here much longer, I assure you of that, Go Mr. Ahead. Cunningham. Go in there. Go in there and tell them. Tell them! You'll be doing me a favor. Well, what you mean a man with your legal experience, with your plans and your ambitions, needs a favor from me? Miss Peyton, I loathe you. You, Mr. Cunningham, you make me sick. Why don't you quit, then? Why don't you? Because I wouldn't give you the satisfaction. And I wouldn't give you the satisfaction. Oh, the hell with it. This is not what I want. No, damn it. Oh, I wonder if the man knows what he wants. You damn right I do. You know what it is? You know what I'd like to do? Right now, right here in this office, I'd like to rip your clothes off your back, piece by piece. I'd, I'd like to dig my fingers into your flesh and feel your body break and sweat on the mine. Now do you understand, Miss Payton? Poor. It's been eating me up ever since I first saw you. I want you, Miss Peyton. Now, now, right here on the floor, screaming your lungs out, kicking your legs up in the air. That's all I've been thinking about. That's that's all that's been on my mind, sitting at that stupid typewriter. Now you know. Well, <laughs> well, what do you think I've been thinking of, Paul? My body aches with wanting you. How many times have I sat here just praying you'd do something instead of sitting there like a stone statue? <laughs> oh, I'll tell my mother, and you tell your wife. Oh, I'll be good to the children, I promise you that. You, you want me to tell my wife? Of course. We're getting married, aren't we? But, Sylvia, you don't understand. Well, we are getting married, aren't we, Paul? Ah, uh, the hell with it. I'm gonna eat. I know it's my fault. No matter what you say. No. Yes, no, it no, is. No, it's, it's nobody's fault. It's, no, it's the way things are. You, you don't want me to get you anything? No, I'm not eating. You, you sure you don't want me to get you anything to eat? I positive. Well, suit yourself. The sandwich is fine. Did the table come? How is it? Did you look at it carefully? Because sometimes they get damaged in shipping. I hope so. Did, um, did I get any calls? No, I wasn't expecting any. Oh, uh, yeah? <laughs> what did Charlotte say? Oh, boy. That's just like her. Yeah, well, she could come at least once a week to see how you are. Oh, all right, listen, listen, have it your way. I'm too tired to argue with you. How are the children? Well, that's nice. An 85 average does not mean he's a genius. Oh, no, not by any stretch of the imagination. I, I'm not saying she has stupid children. That is not what I said. I, I just can't stand it when you raise them to the skies like that. Mother, mother, I repeat, an 85 average is not in the genius class. Now, do you want proof? You want proof? You ask anyone in the educational field. All right, let's just drop it. Could we, could we just drop that, please? All right, of course I'm coming home. Where would I go? All right. All right! Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Mm. 
Mr. Arnold Robinson of 1432 Lexington Avenue in the city and state of New York. How are you today, Mr. Robinson? Would you give my regards to your family? And who is this coming along? Oh, it's Mrs. Beatrice Robinson. We live in Lexington Park Avenue in the city and state of New York. And how are you, Miss Beatrice Robinson? What do they call you for short? Do they call you B? And how are you? Would you give my love to your ah, family? Ah, uh, you're up to your old tricks again, Sylvia. You're never going to keep your figure that way, you know. Well, don't do that. Just don't do that. You worry about your figure, and I'll worry about mine. Now you got a point there. You took my lunch, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Here, I, I brought you some coffee. Oh, thank you. How is it out? Well, it's a little chilly. The sun is strong, though. It's nice. I, I took a walk in the park. I never saw so many characters sitting on benches and sunning themselves. I sure would like to know how the hell they do it. Yeah, well, half of them are probably on relief. Yeah. We work, and they sun themselves. Oh, sure. And you should see, you should see the job, the, the cars some of them have. Oh, I know. You don't have to tell me. You know, Paul, I read in the paper that by the year 2000, people would be working for three hours a day, three days a week. That's not going to do me much good. Well, we could join a union. Did you ever hear one that wasn't crooked? Oh, I'll be so glad when this day is over. Well, it'll be good to get these shoes off my feet. Yeah, I'm going to wash my hair and I'm going to do a little ironing. No date tonight? Oh, please, don't be funny. You know, Sylvia, I was thinking, ever since I was a kid, I, I always thought I'd like to be independent, live my own life, not get involved with families and responsibilities. Inside of me, I guess that's, that's what I was always afraid of. But you know, everything I've done in life has taken me away from what I thought I wanted to be when I was a kid. I got married as soon as I could. I had children right away. I, I made it so tough for myself, I couldn't get through law school. I couldn't live the kind of life I thought I wanted. Lately, I've been asking myself, what is it I really wanted? You know what the answer to that is, Sue? You know what it has to be? What I got, what I am. Maybe all I really wanted was to feel sorry for myself. Oh, well, does anyone know what they want, Paul? Don't you? No, I thought I did, just as you did. But now, if that's what I really wanted, why am I where I am today? Don't make sense, does it? No, no. You know, I swore that at the first opportunity, I'd break away from my mother and my sister. I'd have nothing more to do with them, and that'd be happiness for me. But here I am. I'm still living at home, and every day I ask how my sister is. How is her husband? How are the children? And I don't give a damn. No, I don't. No, I don't give a damn. Well, the, the things I don't give a damn about. Listen, this is important, Sylvia. Let's, oh. let's look into this. Oh, I have always said, there's nothing more important than getting to know yourself. Now, now, now you know, Paul, when you think of the number of people who go through life without getting to know themselves, now, without really getting to understand themselves, it reaches the ridiculous. You're absolutely right. Well, let's look into it. I mean, let's see what's behind it all. All right, let's get to it. Why? Why? Why do you say leaving your family would make you happy? That's all there was to it. You could have done it years ago. No, there's something you're hiding. Well, you're not telling the truth. I mean, if all you wanted was to feel sorry for yourself, all you'd have to do is go into a corner and feel sorry for yourself. I mean, that's all there is to it. But that's not it. What is what it? What are you hiding? Look, the, the fact remains that you do care what happens to your family. You care a lot, an awful lot. That's, that's why you're always on the phone. That's why you're always asking about your sister. You want to keep them together. You need them more than they need you because you never developed emotionally enough 
to forget the past and start a new life for yourself. Yeah, you see, you deliberately put yourself into situations in which you had a fail. Now, why is it I never heard you say you loved your wife? I mean, what was behind your marriage at such an early age? Why didn't you wait till you finished school so you'd have a fair chance of getting ahead? Simply because you wanted something from them. Your, your father's ring had nothing to do with it. You, you were using that as a smoke screen. See, now we're coming closer to the truth. You had a rush into marriage, have children, burden yourself with impossible responsibilities. You had a fail, not because you wanted to feel sorry for yourself, but because you wanted other people to feel sorry for you. That's it. They alone could give you what you thought you wanted. No one else, not even a husband. That's why you never got married. Oh, now we're getting closer. Yeah, <laughs> so that they would pity you and pamper you like a child. You mistook that for love, which is what you really wanted from them. The love which you couldn't get from your parents. There it is. You, you wanted, wanted love. love. Of course. Don't you see it now, Sue? Oh, my God. You know, it's all so clear. You see, once you know something about yourself, then, then you can start doing yeah. something about it. You know, Paul. This has been one of the pleasantest conversations I have ever had. Well, I've enjoyed it myself. <laughs> <laughs> and the afternoon is going pretty fast, too. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> you know, though, when, when I think about it, I'm sure a lot better off than you are. Oh, why is that? Well, I, I do have a place of my own. I did get married. I do have children. You could say I fulfilled a pretty important part of my life. Well, that's nonsense. I mean, what, <laughs> what, what do you think? It takes a special talent to get married and have children? No. All I said is there are some people who would be very happy if they could have gotten married. Now, are you referring to me, Mr. Cunningham? Well, I... I didn't mention any names, Miss Payton, but if the no. shoe fits... No, no, wait a minute. Don't make me laugh. Because if I had to choose, and I assure you I don't, I would prefer being single than having to continue with an unhappy marriage. An unhappy marriage? Who, who, who said that? Did, did you ever hear me say that? Did you ever hear well, me I say that? I can put two and two together. Now, we both know if you had your way, you would have left her long ago. Is that so? Oh, yeah. Well, that is so exactly. Well, for your information, Miss Peyton, my wife happens to be one of the finest. Oh, you hear me? One of the finest, one of the most decent women. It's ever been my good fortune. Please, Mr. Cunningham. And for your further information, Miss Peyton, I, I wouldn't trade her for a dozen like you. Oh, you couldn't, possibly. Thank God. Thank God, at least. I can get away from you for a minute. Go ahead, go ahead. You think I don't I don't know what goes on in there? Oh, please, what is the man raving about? Go on now? in, go on in. I can hear your boyfriend panting behind the door. Oh, uh, what are you, jealous? What, of you? Well, it's happened before. You bitch. What did you say? Oh. Oh. You better be quiet. Barbara, Paul, how are the kids? That's good. Barbara, listen. I'm sorry about last night. I, I guess I had a little too much to drink. Well, don't go excusing it. I, I just want you to know I didn't mean any of it. I, I think an awful, awful lot of you. You know that. And uh, I respect you. I always have. It, it's just that when I'm drinking, it's the whiskey doing the talking. Bob, listen, I'm going to stop. I promise. You forgive me, don't you? Well, say it, say it. I want to hear you say it, please. Right, right. Listen, Bob, uh, I'll get off early. And we'll go out and we'll do something. Something together, something different. Something different. Right, right. And don't you forget.
He uh, wants you to type copies of these. He's waiting for them. What's that? You heard me. Well, you'll hear me. You, you just march right in there and tell him to go to hell. I'm not his secretary, and I never was. Oh, well, why don't you march in there and you tell him that yourself? That's a good idea. That's a damn good idea. Mr. Thomas Weaver, of 42 Harley Street, in the Bronx, New York. Well, I hope you're having a pleasant day, Mr. Thomas Weaver. And who's this coming along? Oh, it's Miss Tina Lee Weaver. 1332 Monroe Avenue. Hey, y'all, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of you and your job, you old bastard. Paul! What? Why don't you go in and see your boyfriend now? You find him hiding behind his desk. If he'd have stayed on his feet like a man, I'd have punched him right in the nose. Did you quit? What the hell do you think I did? Trying to pull that stuff on me? I'm not a secretary, and I never was. You hear that, Joe Bassett? I'm not your secretary, and I never oh, was. Oh, oh, you're in enough trouble already. Trouble? Me? Oh, oh, that's the funniest thing I ever heard of. You're looking at a free man, Miss Payton, a free and independent man. Oh, boy, I haven't felt this good in years. Now, what will you do? Do? I'll start living, for one thing. I'll start being a man again. You don't meet many men nowadays. You know what it is to be a man, Miss Payton? No. You don't meet them. They're all afraid of their own shadows, afraid of spending a dollar, afraid of losing a job. Not this man. I don't lick anybody's boots. What are you staring at, Dad? It's an old customer of mine. You care to join me? I didn't think so. Oh, Paul, come on. This is not like you. What, what do you know what I'm like? What, what does anybody know? We all live alone, Miss Payton. We all live alone in a cruel and lonely world. Oh, how true that is. Ah, the hell with it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm dropping everything. I'm leaving everything. The first bus heading west, you know who's going to be on it? I am. You bet. No, no, no. Come on, Paul. You had enough. No, on, no. I this is no spur-of-the-minute thing that. with me. It's not the whiskey doing the talking, either. I've been thinking about this for a long, long time. This, this city stinks for my money. It's full of smoke and noise and corruption. I don't, I don't know where that bus is going to take me. I'm not getting off till I find a place with lots of room, plenty of fresh air, and mountains, mountains as high as you can see. When I find that place, I'm getting off, and that's where I'm going to stay. Well, do you know, I, I always dreamed of going someplace like that. Ever since I was a girl, someplace away from everyone and everything I know. You mean that? Oh, I'd give anything. So listen. Yes, Paul. We, we get along pretty well, don't we? Uh, we get along extremely well. No, no, well. no. I mean, I mean the times I wanted to take you in my arms and hold you. Oh, well, if you only had. It's not too late now, is it? No. No, Paul. It's not too late. Sylvia, just the two of us together. Oh, oh, Paul. oh Sylvia. Oh, oh Paul, oh. I'm so happy. Yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call my mother, and you, you, you should call your wife. I, I, I don't want there to be any hard feelings. I'd like to make it as pleasant as possible for everyone. You want me to call my wife? Oh, of course. We're getting married, aren't we? Sylvia, you, you, you don't understand. Oh, we are getting married, aren't we? What's the use? It's my fault, I know. No matter what you say no. or do, yes, no. it is. No, of course it's my, it's my no, fault. No, it's my fault. It's my fault. I'm no good. I never had the guts to do anything but feel sorry for myself. I've, I've been a lazy, selfish, no good bum all my life. I never did anything that amounted to a bag of beans. And now, oh, 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 oh. Stop it. Oh, oh come on, Paul, stop oh. it. Come on, what's wrong? It's not me. I don't care about myself. My life's over. Oh, come on. My wife, that bitch can go to hell. It's the children, Sylvia. I love those kids. What, what am I going to do? There's, there's nothing saved, nothing put away, no money, no... What was I trying to do? What was I trying to prove? Oh, now stop it. Come on, Paul. Now listen to me. You go in there and you uh, speak to him. Apologize. Tell him, oh, tell him anything. You're one of the best typists he's ever had. Now don't you forget that. 
You, you think there's a chance? Look, I know how to type, so... Oh, be, yes. That's, that's one thing I do oh, know how to do. No one can say, I don't know, I don't know how to type. Look, look, look at this, Sylvia. Watch this All here. Right. Look at this, Sylvia. You ready? Yes. You're very good. All right, check that. Check it, Sylvia. Yes. Look at... No, All look right. at these two. Oh, Watch this, so Sylvia. Well. Go ahead, oh, check you it. You are very there, good. There's not a single look error. Look at that, how good you... Look at this, Sylvia. No, Paul. Wait a minute, get... Sylvia, watch no, this. No, no, we're not... No, Paul, come on now, get down from there. Paul, get down. They deserve everything I can give them. Oh, oh. I love those kids. I know. All right, now stop it, Paul. Come on. Will you stop it? Give me your foot. Come on. Put on your shoe. Please, Paul. So, come on. You'll, so you'll look respectable when you go in to see him. He'll never take me back. Not after all the things I all said right, to him. All right, now, will you listen to me, Paul? Now, you listen to me. I'm going to straighten things up out here. I'm right. going to brush you off. Now, listen to me, and right. you'll go in and you'll talk to him. Oh, no, we've had enough of that. You're, you're right. You're right, so right. No more of that. All right. I, I learned my lesson. All right, all right. Paul. All right. Oh, oh, come on. Go on in. All right. I, I see just, you look good now. I just want you to know that if I get this job, you go, you're going to see a new man. Good. All right. Paul Cunningham has grown up Watch at last. Watch the chair. Good, Paul. That's good. Well, Sylvia, I, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for everything. All right, but I didn't do anything, Paul. You did. You did. More than I can ever thank okay. you for. T. Sylvia, did you ever think what might have happened if we had met before I married Barbara? Yes, Paul, I did. I thought about that a great many times. Sylvia, listen. No, I, uh, I will not listen. I will not listen. I want you to go in there, Paul. Go on in. You... Go on! Go on. It's all right. It's all right. He, he took me back. Oh, Paul, I'm so happy for you. He was darn nice about it. Yeah. He listened to everything I had to say, yeah. and then he said, well, that's understandable, Mr. Cunningham. We all have our problems. Now, you see, do you see? He can be very nice if he wants to. We all have our problems. He's not a stupid man. Oh, on the contrary. He understands a great many things. You know, maybe, maybe we ought to get him a gift. Uh, something from the staff to to show our appreciation. Oh, well, I think that would be very nice. Yeah, well, there's not much left of the day now. No, it'll soon be over. <laughs> what, huh? What, oh, what are you saying? Miss Supervisor, I'll never forget that as long as I live. Believe me, Mr. Cunningham, I didn't ask to be made supervisor. I don't like telling people what all to right, do. All right. That's part of... We all have our pretensions, Paul. That's very true. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Oh, I was... I was thinking about a boy that I used to go with when I was younger. The Chinese fella? What Chinese fella? I never knew a Chinese fella. Oh, no, Paul, no. This boy was an entertainer. Now, he could make you laugh just by looking at you. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know, did you, Sylvia? I used to take singing lessons. No. Oh. I did. No, I, yes, now, Paul, I, did. I, I did. never knew that. When I was eight or nine. Oh, well, I never knew that. Way down upon the Swanee River, Far, far away. That's why you my have heart a nice is voice, Paul. <laughs> Paul? That's so loud. Oh, 
It's, it's 12 minutes to 5. Well, we don't usually stop typing until 10 minutes to, Paul. I know, but I thought... Oh, oh no, no. That wouldn't be fair. Well, you're right. You're right, as always. Now, Sylvia? I would uh, say there's still a minute to go. Now, Sylvia? Yes, now. My goodness. Whew, I am tired. A good hot bath, and then to bed with me. All wool knickers, from factory to you, at a tremendous saving. Knickers, we've been selling knickers. Yes, well, uh, come on, come on, let's get these things put away. Well, not many people wear knickers nowadays. But they're comfortable, they're, they're very warm. <laughs> they're very practical. Here, very, let me help you with that. Practical. <laughs> Are you, uh, are you sure that it's time? It doesn't feel like five to me. I, I know, we, we were just getting ready. Oh, well, what time is it, Paul? It's two minutes to go. It's time. Paul, um, what is, uh, I have such a bad recollection. What is, uh, that new man's name? Uh, Stone. No. Smith? No. I never could remember names. Well, I think we ought to give him a pleasant good night anyway, huh? Uh, good night. Good night in there. Good night. Have a pleasant evening. I'll, I'll walk you to the subway, Sylvia. Oh, well, that would be very nice. <laughs> 